uh, to get started. Okay, great. And do you want to spotlight me, Amber, for the sake of the recording? Uh, Joyce, I believe you already okay. are. Okay, I'll spotlight myself. I took okay. it. Okay, so there I am. Okay, welcome everybody. And um, we have this fun program tonight. And it's really, first I want to thank Amber and the Middle Country Public Library because she put so much effort into gathering these supplies and organizing all these programs. And I've known Amber for years and I just admire her zeal for, and zest for art. And today's workshop is, you know, it's fun. It requires some art skills, but it's, it's a lighthearted, fun workshop that we need at this time. So we're going to be making Valentine wine glasses. And I was thinking about Valentine's Day, so I hope you'll indulge me. And sometimes little thoughts just pop into my head. Valentine's Day is in your heart for mothers and lovers, for children and pets, for widows, widowers and widows, for grandmas and grandpas, for husbands and wife, wives. Don't wait for your beloved. Love first, stand for love. Your Valentine is already here. So thank you for indulging that little poem. It just popped into my head when I thought about doing these glasses. So um, this is an example of one that I made, but I'm gonna give a little presentation so that you can come up with your own ideas of what you want to put on the glass, depending on if you wanna give it to a gift or use it as a decoration, drink from it, or you know, put candy in it. So here's my rose. And I'm gonna show you how to make a basic simple rose. And I just wrote on the back, cause I do watch The Bachelor, I'm not proud of it. Will you accept this rose? <laughs> and I'm gonna make another one that says, of course I will. And I'm gonna give that to my best friend cause we watch that silly show together. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna do a brief presentation. The glasses I'm showing you are not my glasses. I pulled them off of the internet from Pinterest and eBay and so on and so forth. Um, and then I'm gonna show you the painting techniques. So I'm gonna do a little screen share just to give us some ideas of how you can design um, your glass. So, whoop. Okay. One idea, um, you can make more than one flower and make them smaller and have them go all around the, you can create a pattern or a motif that goes all around the glass. That probably will take a little longer, but you don't have to feel pressured to rush and complete this tonight. This is pretty, you know, combining hearts. And I'll show you how to blend the colors so you could get those different shades of pinks, or you could just use a more, um, bold color like a red. Okay, this one is done a little bit more in an outline kind of style. You could see the outline of the rose. Somebody's waiting to come in. Okay, um, I'm going to show you tonight how you can paint the roses without making a hard outline. So it looks, looks less cartoony. These are actually selling in Kmart. Here again, you can see the light and shadow and the roses are different scales. Some of them are big, some of them are small. This is another idea. You can make them super small if you're not as confident in your painting ability, right? You can simplify. And of course, you can always do the simple Valentine motifs like hearts and X's and O's and hugs and sayings. And um, this person used dots which is, I think that's actually a little hard to do because it's hard to get an exact dot sometimes on glass. And we are going to work from this template as a rose, but I want you to not feel like you have to do this rose. I'm just gonna do this as an example. Does that make sense? You might have another rose in mind, right? Okay, so, Let's just start with a little painting lesson before we actually paint on glass, okay? I, here's, I did a little outline of the rose just so you could see it, but I'm gonna show you how you can create these edges without actually making the outline. 
we're gonna do dark to light or light to dark, and then put a contrast of the edge so that it pops. And I'll show you what I mean. So we have different shades of pinks or reds. So I put some of that on my palette here. And now I'm gonna lay out some white. And um, I have a, a very dark purplish blue. Your color might be slightly different because all the colors that Amber purchased are slightly different, but we all have basically a, a warm pink or red, a cool dark and a white. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to make a simple gradation. I'm gonna do it on this paper so it shows up big and then we'll get started on our glasses. And by the way, this is super fun. You can also make a painting of this, not just on glass, right? So I am going to start with my pure color here, okay? And then I'm gonna put that along the area that would be darkest, which would be underneath that form, you see? And now I'm not gonna use water to make it lighter. I'm going to add a tiny bit of white, but sort of very gradually. See how I'm gradually adding white, right? So obviously it's turning into a softer pink, right? Now that already looks pretty. You can take another brush that has no paint on it. Um, I actually have this fan brush, but this won't be required for your glass painting because any small brush will do. There's no paint on here. And then I'm sort of gonna smooth it along if I wanna eliminate some of the brush strokes, very gently. Okay, when I work with kids, I call that the fluff brush. So this is called a, a gradation, right? Where we go from red to various shades of white, but we do it gradually, so it's a gradation. That makes sense, right? Now, let's say this black outline was in here and I wanna paint this petal and I want this to pop. What am I gonna put back here? I'm gonna put a dark to add, make contrast. The contrast is gonna create the outline. So it really depends on you how much contrast you wanna create. Suppose I wanna get like a, a darker red. I could add purple, I could add blue, I could even add green. So here I go. And usually I just add a touch because these colors are really strong, right? So now it's becoming a little more purple, a little darker, okay? Now I'm gonna put that right now next to that white, you see? Even if that magic marker line wasn't there, it would start to pop because of the contrast. Now I can decide how much How much gradation do I want there? And then I can take my brush and eliminate the brush strokes. So you see how pretty that starts to look? Then you're gonna go back into it. You're gonna layer it depending on how opaque you want your flower to be. Any questions so far? Okay, let's get started on the wine glass. I put a little tissue in mine so that it shows up. You don't have to do that. What I am going to do is I'm gonna use a very thin brush and I am going to draw this picture of the rose on this glass. When I'm doing it, avoid putting your fingerprints all over where you're painting because there's oil and we don't want that. You want a nice clean glass. And I would also, if you're planning on drinking from this, Put it low because even if you seal it, I don't like personally the idea. I don't know if that's toxic or not. I think it's simpler to put it low. 
I'm not going to be, this is a huge wine glass. If I'm drinking from this, I'm in trouble, okay? So I'm going to use this as a candy dish. So um, here we go. Does everybody have a thin brush that you can kind of control the paint? Don't add water to it. It'll be too, um, too messy. So I'm going to start. You all have this template, right? Is that right? Yes. Okay, so I think the easiest way to start is with this spiral, and then I'm going to work my way around it. So really, this is actually good concentration, and it's very forgiving because it's a flower. So if it's not perfect, it's not like drawing a face where somebody's going to notice the nose is in the wrong place. So... Here I go, and I'm going to start with the spiral. Might be hard to see. This, my paint is a little watery. I might switch to another paint, another type of paint, but we'll start with this. So there's my spiral. Here's my petal. So basically you're just gonna carefully follow the shapes around. You don't wanna do this rose, then pick something else that you wanna do, but start to outline it on here. And I'm not gonna worry about the leaf right now because that I'm gonna do in a completely different color. And you can adjust the shapes. If you did something too small, you could just easily adjust it. And you could wipe away. You could take a tissue and you could easily wipe away. So here is my basic rose. It's very sketchy because it's very light. So would anyone like to show us what you have so far? Donna? Let's see, how's it going, Donna? I'm gonna add your spotlight. We can't hear you, would you like to unmute? Hi, okay, so I put the tissue in. I'm still working on the spiral. Like you said, the colors are very light. Yeah, we're gonna have to give it several coats. That's why don't add any water. Okay, no, I haven't. I want it to be as thick as possible. Okay. Now, what you can do is let it dry a little bit and then outline it again. Right, okay. okay. And then we're gonna start to fill in, but this paint is quite watery. So you will have to give it a few coats there. Okay? Okay, yeah, thank you. Pop, you look happy. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, good. So I am going to spotlight myself and I'm gonna to continue to go over this outline here. This is very relaxing. I have a master's degree in painting. I worked at the Museum of Modern Art for 10 years. I wrote seven books about art and I'm finding this to really be very enjoyable because there's no pressure. It's fun. And it's just a nice feeling of the, the paintbrush on the glass is a nice tactile smooth feeling. Okay, yeah, so as you go over it, the lines will start to show up more.
So who has a basic rose and how many people are ready to go on to actually applying the color more in the rose itself? Let's see. Margo, uh, let's spotlight Margo. I feel like I've met you before, Margo. Maybe in one of the face-to-face -face workshops or other Zoom, I met you, right? Oh, that looks good, Margo, hold that up. What would you like to say? Many times, you've, we've, I've been in your class many times. Yeah, very nice to see you. Okay, good. So that spiral in the middle, you're gonna have to use a small brush to get in there to define that shape later, okay? But good yep. start, very good. Okay, so now I will go on to step two. You could take your time. I'm going to show you how I could start to fill in using that gradation technique on one petal, okay? So here we go. So I'm taking a little blue or purplish blue, a little pink, and I'm making a nice, um, almost like an auburn over here, okay? And now I am going to put that along the edge. Also make your brush strokes, don't just do them straight across, make them flow with the form. Don't do it, but it's called by rote, like a robot, right? I'm doing it along the form. So there's my purple and here's my pink. Could you hold the glass a little more? I can't see it. Can you see it? I did, yeah, kind of am painting back. Okay. Yeah, and I'll hold it up again, but thank you. Yeah, just chime in if it's not right because sometimes it, you know, it's easy to lose track. Okay, so here's my white. The white is helpful because the white is a little more opaque. And I'm going to go over this. I'm going to give it more coats later. And then I'm going to take a very, uh, very carefully, I'm just going to fan it a tiny bit. Smooth it out. You don't want to do it too hard on the glass. You'll get all sorts of lines. You have to be very, very soft with that. Okay. So do you see how the it goes from a little purple to a little pinkish and whitish right in here, okay? And now I'm gonna go to the work around the whole flower and then you're gonna give it a second coat. Any questions, problems? Yeah, I have no idea what you're doing. Who said that? Margo, I guess I'm the only one unmuted. <laughs> no, Margo, that's okay. Can we go with a different design? Because of I'm not- Of course, yes, you could do I have I have tried, it's not you, I have tried this three, times and it's just not working well what's not working well i start with the spiral and everything else seems to look stupid who said that margo no that wasn't me rosalie rosalie let me see i mean you can do another design of course if it's too hard for you but also do it no no, no it's not it's not too hard it's just i'm not uh, after the spiral it's just for coordinating that's all. Okay, do you have something else to work from? Uh, no, I'll just... Or work from know. your imagination. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to do a rose. If it's frustrating, you can do a heart, you can do whatever you want. Okay? But also, it does take a while sometimes for it to all come together. Okay? I mean, sometimes it's like this? cake with art, you, you know, it looks weird, but then it starts to make sense. Okay. So give it a chance. Okay. Margo, do you, uh, have a, did you have a question? No, I'm just, uh, you know, I mean, I'm painting, but I don't really know what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, it looks cool. like Teresa has a really good outline on hers. I, I just don't know what to do. Amber, I, so I, un, I, un, I unmuted my video so you could see my robe. <laughs> <laughs> Good. 
No, your robe looks great, but your 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 glass looks amazing, Teresa. Okay, let's hold it closer, let's Teresa. And this, this is a trial. This is the glass that it came with. I just had this in my closet. I I didn't want to ruin the big one. Okay, so that looks good. I think the re I mean it, because it's very clear. It doesn't. It's not realistic. It's a motif of a rose. It's a symbol of a rose, right? But it gets the idea across. Now you can, you have actually a nice outline there and now you could start to color it in, right? Can you just explain again how to color it in? Yeah, well, that's, you have yeah, that's where I'm lost. if you want to do it, I'll show you. Let me add my spotlight and I'm happy to show it again, okay? You Is can, there a um, sample that you can put up? Yeah. We could see a sample. And, oh, sure, yeah, here's a sample. Ooh, okay. How pretty so that is. Idea, but this took, there was three coats. At the beginning, it looked weird. But the idea is you're going to go from a dark or a brighter pink to a white. And you work your way around. And then you go back in and you define the edges. But start with one petal like this one and go from light to lighter. Okay? Or this one, red to lighter. Does that make so sense? Do you start with the outside petals first and then and then work inward well, to the spiral? Well, do whatever's easy. It's probably easier for you to do the big shape first. Now okay. the paint, I'm gonna warn you, it slushes around so it's gonna look messy. You have okay. to give it several coats. Okay? okay. But you have a very good start there. Okay. okay. So try one petal, just take the pink, you have pink. Add a little white, add a little more white, and you'll see it's going to start to pop. Okay. okay. Do you do you clean your brush before you get the white, or you just keep the pink on the brush and? I don't clean my brush if I'm working with two colors, pink okay. and white. But if I start to okay. add purple, then I clean my brush because then if you add white and it gets all mixed up, you're going to wind up with a lavender, right? But we just, no, with you just keep adding. Let me show you, okay? Okay. So um, here's my glass, okay? And let's say, for example, I'm gonna put in my purple over here. Probably and now I'm doing a second yeah. coat here. We have, we have just had that discussion I'm in the past. Computer. So here's my bluish purple. And then I'm going in with my red. I'm kind of blending. And here's my white. So you're kind of blending one color next to the other one. Now I have all these brush strokes over here. So I'm gonna take a clean brush and very carefully brush them off. Not completely. Let me turn this light off. I think it might actually make it stand out better. Okay, do you see how it goes from purple to white? Purple, pink, white. Right? And you just put one color next to the other one. The beauty with this project is because you only have a few colors, you really can't mess up. It's not going to turn to mud because any combination of purple, pink, and white is going to look good. Okay? And you could easily, if I didn't like this, I could easily take a tissue and wipe it off. Okay? Even once it dries, you could get water or alcohol, you could wipe it off with a Q-tip or a tissue. We can't hear you, but I see you nodding your head. Yeah, I did mute everybody because I had some feedback and I wasn't sure where it was coming from. Yeah, no, from, I heard so. that, Amber, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, if you would like to chat again, feel free to unmute yourselves. I just, sounds like someone had to take a call before. So we wanted to give them that privacy. <laughs> Okay, so 
Now, who's spotlighted now, Amber? It's you. Okay. And when you're doing this, be a little intuitive about it. You know, if you feel you need to wash your brush, wash your brush. If you feel your water is messy, get fresh water, okay? Like, don't be too, with art, there's got to be some sponta spontaneity in there. If you don't like something, then you change it. And if you don't know what you're doing, it means you're learning something, as long as you're not so frustrated that you want to give up altogether. But the learning is in the doing. Seriously. No, not in the thinking. Joyce. Yeah. I find that when I go when I'm going over it to try and get another coat, it's taking the first coat off. So do you cuz it didn't seem like you waited. Well, mine is also very translucent. So when you work with the is it dry? No, it's not dry. Well, you wait for it to dry. Go to another area. Like, think about what you want to do for other okay. motifs on the glass, like the stem or the leaves. Okay. Because wet on wet okay. with the glass, it's going to, good Good point. It's going to keep coming off. But mine, look how smeary okay. it is. You see how smeary it is? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That can be a little frustrating, but eventually it comes together. Like this one, I'm adding thicker paint, and now it's starting to make more sense here. You see right here? But look yeah. how messy this is over here. So go to a different. Okay, so you area. can't. Because I was trying to use the the dry brush like you did to get rid of the brush strokes, but I guess I can't really do that until after all the coats are done. Well, you have. To, in. That's why I said you have to do it very, very gently. If it's not working for you, then don't do it. Do it later on. Okay. When you do your your okay. top coats. Okay. And go with the flow a little bit of like, let's say you got some brush strokes in there that were unexpected, then just also you can use that as part of your design. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's fine. Because your eye also blends this when it's seen from far away. Okay. And you're going to go over it with different coats, so it's going to start to evolve. The most important thing also with all painting, whether it's on glass, you got to really look at what you're doing. 
So don't look too much at me or, you know, look at the glass and see what's happening with it. So now I'm gonna go to another area because it's just doing exactly what you're saying. So I am okay. going to put my stem in. Anybody else having problems? You can unmute. Is this looking at all like it should? Let me see. Who said that? Teresa. Let's go back to Teresa. And thank you for asking. Teresa, where are you? Oh, there you are. Oh. I think it looks really good. But you know what? I want you to rely on your opinion, Teresa. I mean, I might like, you know, certain clothes that you don't like. So you look at it. Do you like it? Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Um, well, it's, now, yes, mine. It's always hard for me because my husband is an artist. So I feel like whatever I do is going to be very criticized. You see, I, I picked up on that. That's why you wanted the teacher's <laughs> approval. But you know what? You're you and your husband is your husband. I don't know when you say he's the artist, if he has more natural talent or he has more experience, but I am telling you every single child is an artist, every yeah. child. And you have your own inner child that I see you smiling, you're in your robe. So just <laughs> enjoy it. It's not about your husband. Okay. And you know what? You could also go to another area. You could, it's fun like to do a spiral stem and you can put leaves, you could put a message on it, you could put X's and O's, you know, whatever it is. You could put be mine. You could put I'm a good artist. <laughs> oh. I like your robe. That cheered me up. Thanks. <laughs> It did, because I'm in my robe so much. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. As as soon as I come home from work, my clothes come off, my pajamas go on. It doesn't matter if it's 3.30 in the afternoon. I hear <laughs> you. I hear you. Anybody else want to share? Okay, Carmen. Let's see. Carmen, it looks good from here. I'm going to spotlight you. Ooh. Hey, Carmen, yeah, keep going with it. And what I would suggest, Carmen, I can't hear you. Do you want to unmute? So I, I, I stay. I, I just add more, more, more layers of white and pink, right? At this point. Yes. And you want to use the white to define the edges. See, like on this one. Okay. Let me spot. Okay. Uh, this is good to use because it's bigger. But, um, do you see how okay. the yep. white, you have to have some contrast, right? Okay. So as you yep. go back into it here and there, do the edges with some white so that it pops. You, If it's all the same tone, it's just gonna become like a lump. Right. Which okay. it might start to look like, but you that's why you give it more layers going back into it, then you can get more definition. Okay. So it doesn't yeah. become just like a cluster of pink and white. You could see the edges. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And yes. it does become easier as you add more layers. This paint dries pretty quickly, so that's the good news.
See, like now I'm going back in with the white and I'm, because I've done some layers now, I can get some definition in there. You see? The white against the dark. See this? Yes. Beginning, it was hard to do. It was just slushing around. Any questions? So far, so good. Good, this is fun, right? Yeah. I have to say, I'm starting to like mine. I like it. Who said that? Teresa. <laughs> oh, you see, that's awesome, Teresa. You, you have to give it a chance. You really do. You know, when you see the finished artworks, whether it's this or anything else, you really don't see the trial and error, right? You just mm -hmm. see the end product. But yep. it is trial and error, you know, and concentration too. You know, the more you look, the more you, you know, you look at it and you say, well, well, what does it need? Right? Yeah. And it's that kind of thing. Or, oh, well, look at that. That was unexpected. As you work too, I don't know if I already said this, try not to add water too, because it does wash away the other layer. So the drier you keep your paint and thicker, the easier it is to manipulate. You know, so if you're cleaning off your brush, use a paper towel or a rag to get the excess water out. 
Okay. 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 It seems like sometimes also like in mine, I don't know how your colors are. My white is a lot gooier and thicker than the red and the pink. So I'm adding more white. It's making it easier to paint. Your paints might have a different, are they thick enough? Yeah, it seems like they're pretty thick. Yeah, well, that's good. Uma, stop. Get out of there. My cat is drinking my, my water. Yeah, that's I, have, good. I haven't cleaned my paintbrush in it yet, so it's okay, but okay. <laughs> she has her head completely oh. in the glass. Oh my gosh. See, now what I'm doing is I had that blue over there, which made it look a little uh, edgy, the rose. It didn't look so pretty. So I'm going back into it now that it's dry. I'm putting a little layer of red over it so it looks a little more purplish. So it's softening that blue. I think it's looking pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty. This one came out really different, right? This one is more solid. I think because this one's smaller. This one, the paint is more spread out because it's large. Um, but we have a few minutes, we have time, but would anyone let's, since we are all together, I'm happy to, would anyone else like to share and I can offer some feedback and maybe other people have feedback. Anyone? This is mine. I don't know. It's not that great. Okay, let me, let me find you. Oh, that's really good. I like yeah, this. Stripe. Like hearts in the back. That's so cute. Okay. Now the hearts in the back, turn it around for a second. Yeah, maybe touch up the middle one and okay. you maybe want to give them another layer. Okay? okay, like the purple, you know, because I think if you clean it up a little, it might pop better. Okay. What do you think? That's just my opinion. Yeah, definitely. It looks like it needs another coat. Yeah. Like when okay. you paint the wall, you know, you need more than one coat. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think you were at my last work. You look familiar too. Oh, really? No, this is my first time. Oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. And who else? I feel like I kind of lost. It was the, the outside ones were easier for me. And then I feel like when I got to the middle, I sort of lost like the no. petals. Well, go back in now. You know what? It looks really good. But if you feel like you lost the petal, it's because the two pink colors are, are so close to each other, you don't have an edge. So go yeah. back in there and define it with like a light, get, put a little white, okay. a little pink, you know, make a pink and go back in there and like redefine it. Okay. Okay. But it looks good. I mean, it looks fine, but if you want to redefine it, that's what you need to do because right now the, the two petals are blending is what you're saying. Right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Now, on one petal, just go in there, like I'll show you on mine. Um, see like, see like over here, I have a white again, mm -hmm. dark, so that makes it pop, right? Okay. And then here I got the dark against the white. But here, okay. like yours, it blended a little bit, but I don't know, I might be okay with that. It's okay to not make everything equal. Okay. Yeah, but you can go in and define it. And if you make a mistake, don't worry, you can go back over it. Acrylic okay. is very forgiving. 
Okay. Thank you. You're so welcome. And let's see, who didn't I get to? If somebody, you don't have to put your full camera on. Did we get to Tiffany? Oh, that looks good, Tiffany. Very nice. From here, it looks like lavender. Is it lavender? That's beautiful. You like it? Oh, <laughs> you know, it's so nice to see you smiling and happy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> really good. Good job. Keep Thank going. Thank you. Now, mine looks better on the camera than it does in person. <laughs> well, you, I'll tell you why. You want to know why? Yeah. Because um, Zoom blends. It blends things. You don't see all the little imperfections. Oh, it's got a filter. <laughs> No, it just, it just is what cameras do. So like your flower, actually, if you look at that from far away, put it on the table and step back, it'll probably have a similar effect. Well, that's true. It does. Yeah. yeah because yeah. when you step away, you don't see every little bump and detail and every little imperfection. Right, right. But I, I tried the dry, the dry, um, you know, the, the fan brush, but that just messed it up, took paint oh, off the- Can you turn it around for a second? Sure, sure. It looks good to me. I mean, whatever you feel that is bothering you, just fix it. You know, just keep working <laughs> it. You know what I mean? If there's some particular it's spot- the, Yeah, the, the paint is too, it's too, I don't know, it's too gloppy. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. But try one little area, see if you go into it now see if it starts to the texture might get more opaque as you go along. Yeah. Because now it's not gonna be glass on glass. You're gonna be painting paint on paint. Yeah, cause like I went in with the fan brush and the fan brush was actually taking the paint off the glass. Oh, okay. All right, then don't do that. Go back in, see if you wanna put more layers, but I think it looks good, but yeah. you have to be happy with it, but don't be afraid to layer it, okay? To add more to it, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you're gonna eventually be, you're not gonna be painting on glass, you're gonna be painting on the paint so it gets more manageable. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. How about Heather? Heather, would you like to show us? Let's see. Oh, Heather, that looks, look everybody, that looks so good, Heather, good job. Very pretty, Heather. Are you an experienced painter, Heather? Good job, beginner. We can't hear you. Can you unmute? I. Oh, well, we, um, you're having trouble unmuting there. Heather, hold up the glass again. It'll speak for itself. Wow. <laughs> See the way Pretty. she created the darks and the lights and it's, it's simplified, right? But you get the idea of the rose. And now you can decide what do you want to put around it? So it's not just like, it doesn't have to be tonight. Maybe come back tomorrow and you, you know, do you want to put a saying? You want to put a stem? You want to put leaves? Like in this one that I made, um, I'll just spotlight myself. Um, I put the leaves on and then I put the stem going down spiral and then I put another leaf here. I put the little hearts on the bottom, mm -hmm. which is fun, right? See that? So it's fun. You can add mm -hmm. designs around it. So it's not just like plunked in the middle of a glass. Okay. <clears throat> Carmen, do you want to show yours again? Let's see where you are. Oh, you're, you're muted, Carmen. Can you unmute? It looks good. Let me, let me spotlight you so you're bigger. I love it, Carmen. I think it's good. Do you like it? Can you nod? We can't hear you, Carmen. Now I'm going to try to take the purple and define the, 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 the colors, right? Yes, be gentle with it. Don't just do outlines. That's called, it's an accent. Let me okay. just show you like in this big sketch of a rose. Hang on. 
And I know this isn't the exact same project, but just to show you, this is a painting I started of a rose on paper. And oh. um, do you see how I use, it's almost the same approach, but these are the dark, so little accents here and there. Don't just go and outline it. Little okay. Little accents, be gentle, okay? Okay, yep. I got what you're saying. So maybe like in the center and stuff, yep where the natural shadow would fall. Like it's usually in the corner of things, like in our noses, no light gets in there. It's in right. the crevices, the crevices are dark. Okay, yep, yeah. thank you. So that'll make it pop. You don't have to do that, but it does give it more dimension. Okay, um, I like the Let's see, is there anyone who, uh, what about Donna? Can we come back to Donna? See you full circle, Donna. Oh, I outlined like you said, don't do. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I think well, that was nice. Oh, that's not a full outline. You have different shades and stuff. I think it's yeah, really I'm beautiful. I like the I've been layering. I've been layering. What? I've been layering, like you said, let it dry. Yeah. yeah. You like it? Yeah, it looks pretty on Like she said, it looks great on there. Yeah, it looks good. I know. I love Zoom. I love it for that reason. <laughs> Um, but I'm sure it looks good in real life too. Like, is, you know, you look at it from far away. Don't put these obviously in the dishwasher. Right. You know, don't get water on them. It's a water-based paint. And because glass is not porous, the glass is not absorbing the paint and that's why it comes off easily. But that being said, like this one that I have, just as a tip, because this one is fully dried. It's, you know, it's pretty solid on right. there. But I wouldn't what, what is the, the, the name of the sealant that you we would use? You know what? I'm not really good with that type of stuff. So I would go, go to Michael's and see what they have. Okay. Okay. And then, you know, just do research before you drink out of it, you know, and find out if it's safe, if you lick it by mistake or something. Okay. But I would imagine Michaels has a product and they could just tell you exactly what to get. So um, who didn't get to go who would like to share? We have other people who don't have their, how about Michael? Michael Zagrafos or Nixily or Diane or Michelle or Roseanne, Alicia, Rosalie, anybody? I'm just watching for now. I'm gonna be doing it uh, later or tomorrow but I wanted to kind of just tune in. I'm I have to make dinner right now, but I've been watching and it's been very helpful mm -hmm. to see everybody's ideas and all the tips that you've been giving. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Amber, would you like to, um, well, we have two more minutes. Before we close the workshop, I want to again say thank you to Amber and the library because I know honestly she does an extraordinary job and thank you for inviting me personally to teach the workshop. And I do wish everybody a, a happy Valentine's Day, a safe Valentine's Day. And it's not the easiest time right now. Most of us will not be going to fancy restaurants, I'm sure, <laughs> whatever. Um, and some of us, you know, are more isolated than others and different things. So these workshops are a wonderful way to bring us together and you know make the best and be learners and find fun things to do. So I think it's pretty special. It's not exactly it, but so much. It was fun. Huh? And it's fun. So um, and keep, you know, and just keep working on them. You don't don't rush through it or anything like that. So Amber, would you like to make any announcements? Um just uh, if you do want to rewatch a part of this that is going to be available to you, we did record. So thank you for you for everyone who did show their work and everything. Um, it will only be shared with people who registered. So it won't be up there for uh, a prolonged period of time. So we'll take it down once once everyone has a chance to watch it. But you're also free to jump back on and maybe see a part that you missed or uh, share with a friend who might want to, you know, try it as well. So feel free to do that. And this was wonderful. It was really great to see um, 
some of your faces because we've been doing a lot of webinars. So I only see you typing in. So it was really good to um, see your face without a mask because <laughs> I didn't see a couple of you here um, covered up. So it was really good to see everyone again. I um, do hope for times when we can all be together and crafting together um, in person. But until then, we are so lucky. We have people like Joyce who've um, been able to just kind of quickly transform their whole way of offering workshops. And uh, I have to say her setup was wonderful with, you know, you be able to um, change your screen around so we could see what you're doing and then see your face. So that was lovely. Okay. And um, uh, if anyone has any questions or comments or wants to share your final project, you can email me and I will share with Joyce. I'm sure she would be happy to see your um, your duo of glasses together. So feel free to do that. And um, if anyone has any questions, we, we're out of time, but I'm sure um, if you have a, a, you know, one last comment, we could stay on for a few more minutes and then um, I'll end the, uh, the meeting shortly. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Very enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's so nice, me. So let's have a little toast. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. night.